How much does DDR5 speeds affect our performances? It's finally a good time to test the improvements now that the higher clock speeds, RAM sticks are more available and even better. They are cheaper thanks to a nice drop in prices and we all love to see good price drops. This is a video I was really interested in making. As you probably know, DDR5 came out in November 2001. And like every time a new tech comes out, it takes time to establish itself and mature. And if we look at the past, in 2007, DDR3 released and later reached max speeds of 2133 MHz. DDR4 was released in 2014, it launched with a base speed of 2400 MHz and reached at its peak to 5333 MHz, which also comes with its own problems because many boards simply couldn't maintain such speeds. By the way, DDR5 also have the same problem with some of the models. DDR5 was launched with the base speed of 4400 MHz, although it's rather difficult to find such low speed kits. And one can only imagine the speeds it will reach beyond the 7600 MHz kits that has already been released. The real question is what kind of improvements can we expect? So it's exactly what I was very interested in knowing. So before we get into all the numbers, a few words about our test setup today. We're going to use the Intel i5-13600K with the NVIDIA's RTX 3090 Founders Edition and this beautiful Z790 Aorus Master motherboard. The RAM we're using is a new model from Patriot, the Viper Venom RGB that was launched recently, two 16 GB sticks for a total of 32 GB, and this kit is set to reach up to 6200 MHz with CL40 with XMP, of course. And we kept the very same respectable CL for both the XMP and the base speeds so that the results will be as apples to apples as possible. By the way, for those who don't know, CL in RAM is memory cast latency. And the lower it is, the better performance of the RAM will be. The difference in test surprised me a lot. There is a difference that reaches tens of percent on one hand and in the other a lose to the higher speeds. It really matters what your use is. So you need to check and decide what your use is before you choose the RAM speeds for your next build because it has a really big, it could have a really big effect either on the performance or on your wallet. <laughs> Let's start with the synthetic tests. You can see that the difference is very significant in 3D Mark in the results of the processor, up to 22% in Time Spy and 27% difference in Fire Strike in favor of the high speeds, of course. The rest of the tests are not really significantly affected by the speeds of the RAM, so the differences are minor in only a few percentages. The minor difference trend continue throughout all the various Cinebench results. Moving on to the content creation software. You can see in Blender rendering the test of the processor, the difference is between 1 and 5%, which is indeed significant, but most of the rendering in Blender is done on the video cards anyway, but in Adobe application, the extreme differences return again. In Premiere, we see a huge difference of 22% in rendering times. And in Photoshop, a really nice 24% difference. If you ever been stuck at work waiting for a render to finish, the phrase time equals money takes on a very literal meaning here. Even in After Effects, you can still see a smaller improvement of 4%, not extreme, but definitely an improvement. So in general, it seems that Adobe programs really like high RAM speeds. In the gaming situation, it's a bit more complicated. You can see that in most games and resolution, the results are quite similar. There are, of course, some exceptions, such as the 4% improvement in Death Stranding in 1080p, or the 4 to 9% improvement in Forza Horizon 5 from 1080p to 4K resolution. But Forza Horizon in 1080p without ray tracing loses to the faster RAM by 7%. So it's worth checking which games and resolution you intend to play because it may really affect your choose of RAM. And of course, if you work with your computer, especially for creating content, then you probably know that such a change can be significant for you. But the question is, what, for what price? Because even though the price drop just happened, the prices are still not exactly low. For example, the kit I use today, it reaches the max speed of 6,200, which you will have a link in the description, of course, if you wanna buy it. 
you will have to part with $170. If RGB isn't really interesting for you, the price drops to around $145, so it's nice savings. Of course, the price will continue dropping as time passes and as the technology matures and becomes more common in large production quantities. So upgrading from DDR5 will not give a very significant jump in performance for gaming, but if you work in content creation software and the time of rendering and routine work can improve your time by 20 to almost up to 30%, this of course is a major change and can really affect income or simply make your life easier and workflow smoother. I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. My name is Kalapus. As soon as I can get my hands on, on a faster uh, kit uh, to, towards the 7,000, I hopefully will make another video like this to make comparison. Hopefully the prices will continue dropping as we said before. Please write down in the comments what you thought about it, if this video helped you decide somehow, or if you have any other questions, we read everything and we answer everything. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day. Goodbye.